Welcome to the University of Kansas in Memorial Stadium as today Metro Sports is proud to present the 2003 5A State Football Championship game as Salina South takes on Blue Valley. Kevin Wyke and Theotis Brown with you here on Metro Sports. Chad Harberts will be joining us on the sidelines. Well, we've got two 11-1 teams and two teams with some success here in the state title game in recent history. Blue Valley wins in 98. Salina South won in 2000. And Theodos Brown, Salina South, boy, they love their defense. It's been stout throughout the year, and it starts with the guys up front, Ben Googler and Jake Ryan. Well, Googler and Ryan, they, they both do lead the team in tackles for losses, one with nine in Ryan and uh, Googler with eight. These guys are big. Googler, 6'4", 240, very much penetrating kind of guy. Ryan, more of the athletic, wiry kind of guy, runs well sideline to sideline. Blue Valley wants to run the football, and number 20 will get it, Chase Holtham. Yeah, Coach Rampy is going to ride this young man bareback. He led the EKL in, in rushing this year, over 1,700 yards and 22 touchdowns. Look for Holtham, who's been their guy down the stretch, to make things happen for the Tigers this afternoon. And Chase Holdem getting warmed up for the 5A state title game. Salina South taking on Blue Valley. And we'll have your opening kickoff coming up next here on Metro Sports. The high school game of the week is brought to you by High V and their 20 Kansas City area employee-owned High V locations. Farmers Insurance and their Kansas City Metro agents and district managers. Remember, farmers get you back where you belong. KC Bobcat. In Blue Springs, Grandview, and Olathe. Cotman Transmission, home of the best free transmission evaluation in town. Athlete Technology, personalized replica football jerseys for area high schools. And by Overhead Door Company of Kansas City. The genuine, the original. And here comes the Blue Valley Tigers out of the Eastern Kansas League out on the field. And we get ready to go from Memorial Stadium at the University of Kansas in Lawrence. Coaches for today's game. Ken Stonebreaker for Salina South. He is in his 10th year. Record 78 and 28. Captured the state crown in 2000. And the veteran on the other sidelines, Steve Rampey in his 19th year. 128-73 the record and two state titles in 91 and 98. Salina South won the toss to further option to the second half. So it'll be the Tigers returning the kick. Nick Biagioli with the return and not going to get to the 15-yard line as we join the third member of our broadcast team. Here's Chad Harberts. Thank you, Kevin. Unlike the 6A game where clearly all of Hutchinson was here and one-third or one-fourth of the Olathe community, today for the Blue Valley game against Salina South, the entire Blue Valley community has come out to support this Tiger squad as they try to win their first state championship since 1998. All right, thanks, Chad. So the Stillwell folks are here today. Just shy of the 15, first and 10 for Geno Waters and Chase Holton and the rest of the Tigers offense. That's Chase Holton, the leading rusher of the EKL for short yardage on first and 10. As we take a look at our starting laps, brought to you by Dick's Sporting Goods. We love sports as much as you do. Guys up front, they are big and they are good. Bennett, Olney, Speed, Tefreshi, and Korkemeyer. Leading rusher is Holton, leading receiver, is Tyler Newton with 40 catches. Second down at eight. Toss to Holtham, tries to cut back, lost his footing and goes down hard. Kyle Flax, the defensive stop for the Cougars of South. Time now to check Salinas out defensively. And the strength of this team, as we talked about in the open, it's the guys up front. Fritz, Googler, Ryan, Van Neyman and Shackelford. And the leading tackler is Tom Sellers. And in the secondary, we just saw Kyle Flax with a big hit. He leads the team in interceptions with seven. Ben Googler getting ready to tee off. On a third down and long, Waters on the roll. And the pass misses the mark, looking for Tyler Newton incomplete. And you take a look at Geno Waters, he'll go three and out. He also is the punter on this team. Over 1,500 total yards this season. Averages nearly 35 yards per punt. A 
Low snap, and he gets it out of there against the win. Nice roll for the Tigers, all the way inside the 45. That's where the Salina South Cougars out of the I-70 league. Team that finished up second in their league, went four and one. And their quarterback is Luke Sims. But the other system kid will throw it around a little bit. He certainly will. And things that uh, head coach Stonebreaker talked about, the keys to victory is one, really turnovers is important. Field position. If they can convert on field position, they can have a good opportunity. And, of course, convert on big play opportunities. If they can get some big plays from their offense, this will be a key because they know this. they're, they're going to be in a dogfight this afternoon. Cunningham goes in motion. They try to cross him up. Give it to the fullback, Adam, going nowhere as Justin Knutson, the defensive end with the stop of Blue Valley as we take a look at our starters. Brought to you once again by Dick Sporting Goods, the guys up front, McGraw, Anderson, Rimmer, and Ritter, two all-conference guys, and A.J. Nelson. Leading rusher is Jeff Adam with just under 1,000. Leading receiver is Jason Dolan with eight TD receptions. Sims. Brings him up on second down at 10. And they give it up on the end around. And Quinn Cunningham is blown up by outside linebacker Dane Hammett, the leading tackler for the Tigers defense. As we take a look at the defense for Blue Valley and the guys up front, especially the ends, have been so awesome this year at Bauer and Knutson. Dane Hammett, not a big guy, but he leads the team and tackles the outside linebacker. And in the uh, secondary, these guys have done a great job, especially Michael Denning in their last game. Free safety had two interceptions in their semifinal win. There's, there's big Josh Korkemeyer getting ready to go on the D-line as it's third down and 10 and a half facing the Cougars of Salina South. Sims with time, pass deflected, and did it get intercepted on the rebound? Yes! Taken in by Gino Waters off the hands of Andy Shorten. Good job by Gino Waters, kind of Johnny on the spot. You can see the Salina South quarterback. The ball was tipped by number three. Good job and concentration by quarterback Gino Waters, who steps up and picks the ball off. They tried to throw in that, they tried to throw the corner route, and it, it was defended very well. I'm not for sure what, it, what the quarterback was looking at, but Gino Waters gets his first interception of the year. Good job. So from the 40-yard line, first and 10. Holcomb on a stretch play near side. Nice tackle there by Clint Woods for the Cougars. Keep him to short yardage. Of course, Chase uh, been red hot as of late. This kid has 11 touchdowns in the state playoffs. And he's now the all-time single-season rusher in Blue Valley history as he passes Andy Murray for that mark. He's the all-time leading rusher earlier this season, passing Jeff Byers. Just needs two touchdowns to tie Andy Murray, the former Simone winner, with 24 touchdowns on the season in school record. Second down and eight. Holton, the little gap. Breaks the tackle and gets out to the 46-yard line. This is not going to be a fancy game plan for Blue Valley for Blue Valley Tigers. Is that they're going to ride Chase Holtham, who's their bread and butter, has been a hot running back the last four or five games. Good sized kid, six feet, 215 pounds, has good feet, has good vision. More importantly, has a good offensive line that can that can sustain the block. And that's what you want to be able to do is get this young man to the second level. Third down and four out of the shotgun for Geno Waters. And he fakes the handoff, takes off, and Googler all over him, jumps on his back and throws him for a loss. Ben Googler. We talked about Googler being the guy at 6'3", 240 pounds. He's a penetrator. There's an eight, nine-man front. They fake the handoff to the fullback, and, and Googler didn't buy it. Sacks Waters for a loss. And it'll be a loss of three, fourth, and seven. Punting formation for the Tigers and Geno Waters. Once again, putting against a 30-mile-an-hour win. He'll go with the low-line drive. And another good roll as it trickles inside the 15 down near the 10-yard line. Great punt by Geno Waters. That's a great punt into the win. And you get that turnover like that, and that ball bounces on this turf. 
if you can get that uh, that roll and ball balls kind of hit on the 30 yard line and roll 20 yards so you do like that now for um salina south kevin their their deal is turnovers field positions convert on big plays they're going to be running into a 40 defense for the tigers and after the 47 yard punt pitch it out and this is quinn cunningham for short yardage as there was Chris Bass from the defensive line to hold him to a couple on the play. Cunningham, a good rusher of the football, has nearly 800 yards. And then you've got Jeff Adam with over 900, so they split time. You see 25 and 21 running the football throughout. And Sims throwing it, although he's off to a bit of a shaky start with an interception on the first drive. And you'll see multiple sets out of this offense for Salina South. And they like to utilize their quarterback and Sims in the throwing situations. Cunningham is blown up. Andrew Christ inside linebacker says, I don't think so. Third down and long. Chris does a good job. Number 44, Tom Sellers does a good job. Stays at home. And this is what you want out of your inside linebackers coming right at you. Watch number 44 takes on, beats the block by the guard. And then just converges on the tack on the runner. Does a good job. Number 44, Tom Sellers. Third down and long. Sims stepping up, completing the pass. No, incomplete. So looking for Quinn Cunningham. Nice coverage by Chris Bubeck for the Tigers. And it'll be punting time for the Cougars deep in their own territory. As we send it down to the field, and Chad. In the last two drives, Blue Valley has put Salina South in third and long plays. Third down, Tyler Newton and Gino Waters come into the game as defensive backs. They don't play the first two downs of the series, but they come in on third and long. We've already seen Gino Waters make a big play defensively. He had a big interception as Durfee to punt it away. Averages 34.2, low. Bounding kick that gets by the return man Biajoli and be covered up near the 13 yard line. Talk about a huge punt. And Biajoli gets the corner across the 40, and the punter takes him out near the 45 yard line. A huge punt by Craig Durfee. <laughs> 32 yards on the return after the huge bounding punt by Craig Durfee. Nick Biagioli does a good job of retrieving the ball, but then, then getting good yardage. It was a good punt, over 70-something yard punt. Yeah, 74. But, but kind of kicks your coverage. The coverage, he beats the line and gets to the second wave of uh, tacklers, makes good positive yards, Kevin. From the 44, first and 10, Holtum vaulting into the defensive line. He'll get a couple on the play. Chase Holtham also an outstanding baseball pitcher. Throws a fastball, change up curve, gets about 80 miles an hour and a fastball. His dad, Brett, played at Pittsburgh State. Was a defensive back. Young man likes to hunt and fish. And there you see, all time leading rusher in Blue Valley history, and they've had a few good ones. Second out at seven. This is Michael Denning. They'll run number 22 now and again in theaters. This guy's a little smaller, a little shiftier. You kind of like his game. I do like Denny. I like the way he changes up because he has good feet. And you can see it looked like he hit the line and then he saw the hole. And he bounced outside. He has good vision, and you like that in your running back. The ability, this, this is just a change up for Coach Rampy. You hit him with hard, with hold him, and you change him up and bring in a Denny, and he does just what he did. And now it's third. Now that they can only convert the third and short situation. Third down and a yard. Waters on the quarterback sneak, trying to step outside. Sellers holding on for dear life. It's going to depend on the spot. That was just Geno Waters against Tom Sellers, the inside linebacker. And let's see if Geno got enough. It's going to be close. This is in the trenches here. This is third and short. Waters has stopped on his tracks, but he keeps his feet going. But Sellers trying to hold on for dear life. They picked up the first down on that. Good concentration and good effort by our quarterback Geno Waters. As just over 250 yards rushing and nine touchdowns. That is the game's initial first down, recorded by Blue Valley. First and 10, Waters on the roll, the junior quarterback. 
completes a pass to the near side. Tyler Newton with the catch. Back around the 33-yard line, and it'll go for a dozen yards in the first down. This is a good pass by Geno Waters, just the, the bootleg play, the bootleg action, and, and Newton comes back right from ground level. You can see he rolls out to his right. He finds the open receiver, Tyler Newton, who does a good job of coming back to his quarterback, giving him a target to look for. Good completion, good play call. Boy, Waters throws a good ball. Young man, only a junior. Area coaches just rave about his poise, his leadership, his ability to run and pass. They say he's very hard to rattle. From the 33, first and 10. Play action. Pass over the middle, finding the tight end. Casey Donahue for another first down, down near the 19-yard line and a gain of 12. They have the same action with the bootleg. Now they roll left, and what they do, they drag the tight end, number 43, across the middle. As you can see, here they have the bootleg action. And watch right there at the top of your screen, number 43, finds the open spot, sits there, gives a target for his quarterback, Gino Waters, to look for, and makes a positive uh, yardage right there. Kelly Donahue. First team, all ETL last year as a tight end. First and 10. And this is Holtam. Great second effort. Pounding off tackles. And he coughs up the football. Loose on the deck. Covered up in the end zone for a touchback by Ryan Fritz for Salina South. So all so close. And then he coughs it up. And it'll be first and 10 from the 20 for the Cougars. The only thing, Chad, is didn't hold on to the football. Chase Holtam. Right there, good surge, good leg drive, breaks two or three tackles, but then he gets in the open field, and what happens is he has the ball in the wrong hand. The defender knocks it out of his hand. If he just switch balls to the outside hand to prevent the defender getting to the ball, he, not, he might not have been able to swipe it away. Good play by the uh, Salina South uh, defender. Knocking the ball out of Holton's hand. Quinn like he was Cunningham right there. with the hammer job, knocked it loose. And Ryan Fritz covered it up in the end zone. So first and 10 from the 20. Sims will work out of the gun. Trips to the far side. They go the other way. Pass deflected in the air and falls incomplete. Well, you always taught as a ball carrier, put the ball away from the defender, Kevin. And if, and if, and if you have a chance to do that, that's what you can do in the open field. But you just got to hold on to it because on the defensive end, you're taught to swipe the ball away or to jackhammer it out of the, the, the tack of the runner's hand. Second down and 10. They got trips to the top of your screen. Quinn Cunningham now goes in motion in that direction. So four receivers deployed from the right side. Go underneath with a pass. And they find the tight end, Clint Woods. And he's out to the 31 for a first down catch. Clint Woods making catch number 24 on the season. Woods, number 24, comes on a delayed drag route underneath. They clear everybody out on the right side. You can see the quarterback, Sims, looking for him to clear. Jay clears the linebackers. Good play call. And Woods gets on the outside. Some big pad hitting this afternoon, Kevin. Michael Liu chased him out. From the 31, first and 10. Quick pass in the open area. A little bubble screen looked like set up for Quinn Cunningham, and he lost his footing and will lose a yard on the play. Well, this is another good play, even though it didn't get any yards, but it shows that they have the ability to throw this a quick screen to their receivers, kind of the slip screen to their receivers, and, and kind of stretching the play a little bit, kind of a long handoff running through the air, and that's what this team likes to do. They will use a multiple sets of offenses, one and two, three, four, five receivers, empty backfield, they want to spread the field. This quarterback over 2,000 yards passing. Facing second and long. Finding the tight end again. That's Woods. Geno Waters wraps him up. But uh, finding number 24 early. And this tight end has six TD receptions. He was first team all league this year. Well, he's a good one because he's able to catch the ball in 17 yards of catch for a tight end. That, you, he's getting positive yards every time he touches the football. What happens now, the safeties are going to have to be focusing in on that. What happens when that happens, then you get a guy over the top that can hit him with a long, long touchdown pass or a long pass. So they're down in four. Sims has the pocket hold up, and the pass going to be intercepted. This time, Cody Scribner inside linebacker with the interception as Sims throws his second pick of the day, his 15th of the season, and the Tigers have it back in good shape. 
Justin Newton, number 56, puts pressure on Sims. The ball was deflected, but the reason it was because Newton gets in there, number 56, right here is in the shotgun. Watch Newton comes right to pass. Right there, that bumps him just a little bit, just enough to throw that poorly pad thrown ball. But it was because of the pressure by Newton, number 56. From the 47, first and 10, Holton back to work. Pushing the pile back down near the 44 in a game of three. As you take a look at Cody Scribner, his father, Bucky Scribner, was an NFL punter. First interception today for the sophomore linebacker, and this kid has a bright future, Cody Scribner. God, I love those neck rolls. I never wore one, but I... Seem to get to bigger have. and bigger, though. Yeah, they do have that samurai look. <laughs> but it gets the job done. Good job by Scribner. Second and eight, this is Denning. Ooh, man, he took a shot from Blake Barrett. Flags fly as he gets down to the 41, gets about four in the play, but he had to earn it. And holding on the Tigers as the referee today is Randy Finup. Sportsmanship is an issue that will always be relevant in athletics. Discussion topics come and go, but sportsmanship was important yesterday. It's important today and will be important tomorrow. A public service message from the Kansas State High School Activities Association and Metro Sports. You know, Kevin, as you look at this ball game, one of the keys, some of the keys that Coach Rampey spoke of is he, want, he wanted to move the football, make sure they're sound on their assignments, and more importantly, and this is what's interesting, enjoy the day. He really is telling his kids, really enjoy this afternoon because it is very special. And it doesn't happen very often. Second down and long. Waters across the middle, incomplete. And the pass wow. was intended for Brian Oliver, and it was behind him, and he couldn't reel it in. And it's going to be third down and long. Oliver was wide open. If Waters can just sit and just sit and get his feet set, he sees Oliver running wide open on the drag route in the post pattern. There was no one, Kevin, absolutely no one around him. And he just threw it behind him. I guess that was a problem. He was too open for that. But I probably really like to have that ball back because he was open. So the third down and 18 now for Waters out of the shotgun. Setting up the screen to Michael Denning. Breaks one tackle, another. And he'll get to the midfield stripe before he's taken down there. Quinn Cunningham making the stop. Kyle Van Namen. And it'll be punting time for the Tigers. Boy, you're seeing everybody kind of doing some things today on both sides of the ball. Screens, play action, uh, rollouts, comebacks, just multiple sets by both offensive coordinators. Kind of what they're, what they're trying to do, Kevin, is spread the, spread the defense. Now a timeout taken by Salina South. Weeknights at 6, get more than the score on Metro Sports Talk with Mick Schaefer. Highlights, scores, expert analysis, plus you can call in and offer your take on the local sports scene. Metro Sports Talk, weeknights at 6, only on Metro Sports. Well, you take a look at the veteran coach, Steve Rampey, and what a job he's done, Theotis. Uh, this was a team after their 98 state title. Uh, you know, they went one and eight and a couple of bad seasons after that. Of course, they were uh, losing players to the new high school, Blue Valley West, and he has rebuilt this program, and they're back in the state championship game just a few years later. Yeah, and you knew they were going to be they were going to be good because of their offseason program. Really, the kids believing in the coach, believing in the system, coaches identifying their personnel, knowing what they have, and more importantly, being able to execute. Cunningham and Dolan, your punt returners, as Gina Waters to punt it away. And this one mopped on the deck. And it looks like Quinn Cunningham has covered it up for the Cougars as Dolan muffed it. And there's Quinn Cunningham in the 25 to keep the possession alive for Salina South. Well, their passing game struggled, Theodos. A couple of interceptions for Luke Sims. 
Well, credit the defense by uh, the Tigers. They've been able to put some pressure. The last interception was because of the pressure. Um, the first one, he overthrew the guy, his receiver. But you, again, you like the intensity. The game is going to be won in this football game, Kevin. On the, in the, on the line of scrimmage, in the trenches, where those big boys are being able to meet. Whoever is able to dominate that side of the ball will have an opportunity to win today's, today's football game. From the 21, first and 10, the fullback goes in motion. That is Adam, as Sims will throw on first down. And a tough catch, reeled in by Kyle Flax. He leads the team with now 37 catches. But that was a tough one. As he's able to bring it in for a gain of four. Kyle Flax did a good job of coming back to the football, but good concentration by Flax. And that'll run out our clock in the first quarter. Both teams struggling on offense. We'll move to the second quarter in the 5-8 state title game after this timeout on Metro Sports. Kevin White, Theodos Brown, Chad Harbert's back here at Memorial Stadium at the University of Kansas for the 2003 5A state title game. We begin the second quarter with a second and six for the Salina South Cougars out of the I-70 League. 11 and one coming in, full house backfield. Give it to Cunningham, trying to cut back. And he coughed up the football. The Cougars are on it though, they'll keep possession as there to save the day for the Cougars was Craig Durfee. As we send it down to Chad. Thank you, Kevin. I'm here with Maureen Newton, who's no stranger to state championship games. You had two go through this, and now we're going. Being into the state championship until this year. You wouldn't want to live in my house. It's been, <laughs> it's been really rough. It's been really rough. But you know what? Tyler's going to show them all tonight. I can't wait. He's already had one catch. How do you think he's played so far? Um, I'm not grounding him yet. So, so far, so good. <laughs> and you've all brought out the uh, 05 T-shirts for today. My sisters had this made for my Thanksgiving gift, and they all have sisters. I mean, the aunts are on the back. Mine says mother on the back. Pretty cool. Well, Kevin, third Newton to go to state. We'll see if it's the third Newton to win a state championship at the end. All right, thanks, Jan. Having some mic problems there, but Maureen, yeah, she is a pistol. Oh, absolutely. Her husband, Roger, I don't know how he can stand <laughs> it. Now, the two boys are talking about is Andy and Jesse. Uh, the, the younger brother, Tyler Newton, there, who's a three sport athlete. He plays basketball on the varsity basketball team, on the varsity baseball team, shortstop pitcher, and of course, an outstanding young wide receiver for the Tigers. So he's kind of an all around. I'm trying to figure out what, what do you have all that time to do everything, and, and plus, get good grades in, in school. So, oh, really yeah. a credit to the Newton family. They've been able to raise three outstanding young men. Yeah, Tyler on the principal's honor rolls. They give it on the end around to Jason Dolan. And he's going to be held shy of the first down. Geno Waters coming up from the secondary makes the stop, and the Cougars will have to punt it away. Cougars are trying just about everything. They come with that offense this time with the power eye. They come back with the the reverse to the uh, to Cunningham. So again, you will see multiple sets by this Cougar offense with the ability. One of the things they want to try to do is stretch the beat the defense and try to come up with some seams that they can hit. Bia Jolie back to retrieve the punt. Low line drive against the win and it'll be covered up at the 44. So Blue Valley is a pretty good field position thus far. Going to try to get going. Of course, the big fumble near the goal line by Chase Holton. Right. Otherwise, they might be on the board right now. Yeah, and then, and then they, what happens is Tigers turn around and, do, and play good sound defense right here. The ball is in the inside hand, which allows the defender to come by and swipe the ball out of, the, out of the hands of uh, Holton. If they don't do that, if he doesn't, he's scoring if he doesn't fumble the ball. Holton, lone setback. Oliver in motion, play action by Waters. All kinds of time. Tyler Newton over the middle, wide open. He's got it. Newton down inside the 10, caught by Quinn Cunningham, first and goal. Tigers. Wide receiver Tyler Newton. I'm sure Ma Maureen is excited about that. She says he's not going to ground him. And on that play, he's not going to get grounded. Good throw by Gina Waters. Newton's on the turf right now. Like he hurt his wrist, the Otis. There's Coach Rampy out there. Came down on it, but a good play action. A fake to 
holds him on the play action pass. They, they bid on it. Here's the play action pass by Waters. Buy some time. Good throw. He gets beyond their safety men. And now it's just a foot race to the end zone. Here you can see the play action, which really holds the safety, which allows Newton to get behind the safeties. And a good throw and a good catch by Newton. Comes down hard on the turf. 47 yards, and Tyler is being looked at now by Coach Rampey, and Mom uh, a little distressed right now. I don't blame her. When you see your child out there performing, you want them to do well. You hurt when they hurt. You cry when they cry. Looked like he got his head, like he hit his head hard on the turf. That's coach, head coach Steve Rampey. Looked like he grabbed his wrist when he hit the ground hard. As Jenny Chonko is the trainer, she's coming out with a bag of her medical stuff. Let's take a look at his left wrist area here as we go back to the replay. Here's the final right there. He gets grabbed right there on the 10. Oh, his wrist looked like it was completely rolled under. That left wrist. And he grabs it right there. Yeah, that's what happened. Something didn't feel good right there, right on impact. And that looks to be pretty serious, so. Tyler being looked at by the trainers at 10 24 to go in your second quarter in a scoreless ball game but big play 47 yards by Tyler Newton we'll have it first and goal when we resume but everybody right now focusing in on Tyler's health but potentially a broken wrist or something of that degree for Tyler Newton. That certainly would be bad for that young man because he's worked hard and how important he is to this football team. Well, he leads the team in receptions. He's their place kicker also. Yeah. Very, very good leg. All-state kicker last year. And there's his mother right now. Tyler with a couple of catches for 59 yards in the game. And as Theotis mentioned, he's a tremendous student. 3.95 GPA. And of course, the baby brother of Andy and Jesse, who won a state title, and they always teased Tyler that he's never going to get one. But yeah. uh, he's this kind was of the his Charles today. He's kind of the Charles Barkley uh, in his household. Yep. Great player with no championships. See the worries on some of the students. Once again, we're in an injury timeout for Tyler Newton after his catch and his wrist caught up when he got tackled and appears to have broken his left wrist. So that is the delay right now as the medical people attend to Tyler Newton. Yeah, Oops. that I'm sorry, Kevin, that, that play was actually set up by the fact that they were able to run the football. They pound it inside, give it to Holden, give it to Holden, give it to Holden. Next thing you know, they fake with him. And uh, the safeties bid on it, and Newton was able to get behind the safeties and uh, stride it on out there. So Mom Maureen going to take a look at her baby Tyler down on the field. and. Dr. Driscoll is down there, and uh, Jenny Chonko, the trainer, is down there. So, wish all the best for Tyler. Oh, yeah, he's a tremendous, tremendous young man. He's such a nice kid and just fun to be around. I know my son, they have a relationship uh, uh, with Tyler. They play baseball together and get to see him up on his feet. And you can tell he's in a great deal of pain. And as they put the uh, wrist in a splint. And number five gets a great round of applause from all the folks here. And you just know that as he's walking off the field, the oh, he's boy. thinking, boy, 
I'd really like to play in this game yeah. today. Yeah. I just hope it is not as bad as it looks, but I'll tell you what, uh, Tyler Newton means a lot to this program and a lot to this football team, and uh, hate to see him walk off the field like this, but. Dino Waters comes over to give him some well wishes. As Tyler Newton, in a great deal of pain after what we think to be is a serious fracture of his wrist. The way they splinted it up, it's not pretty, not good. And Tigers will try to regroup here without one of their big time playmakers, Tyler Newton. Now they really have to make some adjustments when it comes to uh, place kicking now because Tyler was their guy. Right. All state kicker at four field goals this year. So, first and goal from the nine as we resume play. Holtham in your backfield, your lone setback. This will be Chase Holtham. And he'll get a couple on the play. Jake Ryan, the nose tackle, 209 pounds senior. Flying in there makes the stop. After a gain down to the seven, a gain of two on the play. Jake and a goal. I'm sorry, Kevin. Jake is just one of those guys that is very active, a nose tackle, not very big. 5'10, 209, but it's just tough to knock off his feet. Very active, leads the team in sacks, in quarterback sacks. And that's because he's just so difficult. He takes up three positions, the center and both guards. So it tells you how active this young man is. Honorable mention. All I 70 this year leads the team in tackles for a loss. Waters the throw on the slant. And it's complete for a touchdown. Brian Oliver, 6 0 in Blue Valley. Brian Oliver does a good job in just a quick slant, number nine. But the ball was delivered well. Watch the step, three step, and throw by Waters right on the money. Oliver, Brian Oliver finds it, uses his hands to shield the defender. Great throw, good concentration, successful play, Kevin. Third touchdown of the season for Brian Oliver. And it's the ninth touchdown pass of the season for Geno Waters. So without their kicker, Tyler Newton, they will go for a two-point conversion in a moment after a delay of game penalty is whistled on Blue Valley. Wow, that was quick. On the offense, repeat the try. So they'll repeat the try, but they will do it from the eight yard line instead of the three. Well, Kevin, this certainly will make Coach Ramper refocus again what happens in the kicking game, because if it comes down to it, instead of him kicking it, he has no alternative but to go for it. And this time going for it, a two point conversion. Waters, quarterback draw, breaks the tackle of Barrett, still on his feet. Oh, some nice moves, trying to turn the corner, pushed out by Ryan Dolan. And the two-point conversion try is negated, so it's 6-0 Blue Valley, nine and a half to go before halftime. Good effort by quarterback Geno Waters to break tackles. It was, a, it was a play call, just a quarterback draw. He breaks it to the outside. We'd like to take a look at the touchdown right here. Here, just a three-step drop. Finds Oliver, Brian Oliver, number nine right there, delivers a good pass, and this was the two-point conversion. Watch how he stays with the play. Good vision, good feet, good balance. Good play by Waters. Like his touch on, the, on, the, on, the, on some of his throws. The throw to Newton before he gets injured was a good toss. The toss to Oliver at the end in the end zone for the touchdown. Three plays, 56 yards. Brian Oliver, the touchdown catch. And the Tigers strike first here in the 2003 5A state title game. Need it six to nothing. But they lose one of their key guys on that drive. Tyler Newton out with a what's perceived to be a broken wrist after a huge 47 yard catch. So you lose. Basically a wide receiver, a defensive back, and an all-state kicker. So that's a triple whammy there. And a kickoff. He does the kickoffs, too. Now number six, uh, he has to step in and do his job. And uh, oh, Hammett, has to, uh, Dwayne Hammett has to come in and uh, take over the kicking duties. Dwayne Hammett kicks away, very short. 
fielded by an up man for the Cougars, and he'll take it out near the 39-yard line as David Alton on the return, a senior. And that's where the Cougars will have it back. So, yeah, all kinds of shuffling going on in the special teams world, the defense and offensive world. As you take a look at Ken Stonebreaker, head coach of the Cougars of Salina South, beating their inner-city rivals to go to state the two-time defending state champs salina central 17 to 10 to get here to today's game from the 38 first and 10 they go with an option game and the quarterback is stuffed drew bauer the defensive end also big old josh korkemeyer throw the quarterback for a loss bauer and korkemeyer right there look like the guard missed assignment right there it goes right by him and leaves the quarterback naked by himself. Number 77 does a good job, and, and Korkemeyer just stuffing the play before it got going. And Drew Bauer, number 99, but I, if you can't stop, that, that kid's a big, pretty good-sized kid. He got penetration, and that's where they want to win. They want to win domination up front. Korkemeyer has added 40 pounds in the offseason. He's at 280, end around. To Jason Dolan out to the 42 yard line before free safety Michael Denning wraps him up. Gain of four on the play. It'll be third down and six yards facing the Salina South. I'll tell you, when you watch this Tiger defense, and they do run uh, kind of that multiple 40 defense, they would shift guys around. They would use Hammett as an inside linebacker. They would bring him out to the outside. He's, he, this guy is kind of the sets the tone for the defense, leading tackler. So they're going to use a little bit of everything in this defense to kind of disrupt the South, the Cougars offense. On third and six, play action. Sims with time over the middle, has a man, but misses the mark. Kyle Flax, your intended target, but couldn't run underneath it. It's incomplete, and the Cougars will have to punt away on fourth and six. Sims had Flack. Flack got behind the safeties, and again, for some reason, uh, he was not able to connect. They can see the play action, misdirection, even fooling our camera guy. Wide open in the middle there. There's no one there. Wow. Boy, he likes to have that. He'd probably like to have that pass back. Cougars in punt formation. Craig Durfee gets it away. Nick Biagioli will let this one hit. And he'll be touched down near the... 32-yard line, so the Blue Valley Tigers will start there. Leading 6 to nothing on a 7-yard touchdown pass to Brian Oliver from number 7. Gino Waters, and of course his brother played here last year, Billy Waters. He's now at Hutchinson Community College. He's a linebacker, and of course uh, they had a sister, uh, Mandy, who was an outstanding soccer player. Soccer She's player. a professional Absolutely. soccer player. Absolutely. Now in Australia. A lot of being an All-American uh, at Missouri. Yeah, a lot of talent in that family. Probably from mom and dad, right? What do you think? <laughs> oh, yeah. First and ten. Holton breaking an initial surge of tacklers, but then he runs into Blake Barrett, inside linebacker. And this young man is the most improved player on the team. He a junior, number five, is stepping up, and he's laying some wood to the Tigers today. Hey, Blake Barrett is a good a athlete. He runs well. Good initial contact on, on that's made on Holton. But the coaches like to praise this guy because he makes a lot of plays away from the line of scrimmage. He doesn't mind getting his nose bloody. And you saw right there in that 5-2 defense where the linebacker can step up and plug up the hole. On second and nine. Waters with the play action. Has time. Goes to the flat to Casey Donahue. And he's blown up immediately. Ryan Dolan from the secondary taking down the bigger tight end. Donahue goes 6'4", 255, and uh, Dolan goes a uh, buck 61. <laughs> well, Donahue's a big boy. He's a big boy. That's a tough pass. Again, you're on the left hash, and you're throwing the ball all the way across, and uh, he luckily, he's lucky that he held on to it because the defender was right on him when the ball was there. No gain on the play. It'll be third down and nine. For Gino Waters and the Tigers. Three-step drop throwing the fade, and Oliver can't get it. It's incomplete. Coverage by Quinn Cunningham. And plenty time now for the Tigers. This is the favorite play of the Tigers is the regular fade route. They use a lot with Newton. Now they do it with number nine, Oliver. They look for that mismatch, and they look for the one-on-one -on -one coverage. 
and they got that. They just didn't connect on it. Gino Waters in punt formation. Dolan and Cunningham, your twin safeties for the Cougars. End over end. And this will be Dolan from the 26, reversing his field. Nice cutback by Dolan. And finally ripped out of play. Nick Piazzoli with the special team stop for the Tigers. Dolan is a, a dangerous customer and a 70-yard punt return against Great Ben in the regionals. Uh, here he is in action using the other side of the field. Well, he's trying to get to the wall. He avoids one tackler, but if he was able to get to the outside, he had some room. But you want to, as a punt returner, you want to get that initial wave, get in front and find the wall, and then let your athleticism take over. And he's got 4-6 speed as well. So after the punt return, first and 10, option pitch. This is Quinn Cunningham, some nice moves. Turns the corner across the midfield stripe into Blue Valley territory near the 45. And a first down run as we send it down to Chad. Thank you, Kevin. I think a lot of people thought going into this game it would be a very high scoring game, a shootout. After all, both these teams are averaging in the high 30s in the playoffs as far as offensive output. But right now, the defensive lines have taken control. Salina South has had excellent backside help as far as Blue Valley's running game, and Blue Valley's defensive line has had great penetration up the middle of the Salina South offense. Thank you, Chad. 19-yard gain by Cunningham. First and 10 from the 45 in Blue Valley territory for the Cougars. And this is the fullback, Jeff Adam. And boy, not much doing there. Aberstro there, also Andrew Chris. And Chad makes a good point when he talked about, you just saw it right there, the penetration of the Tigers' defensive line. They're able to get in that initial front and hit those gaps and stop the play before they, before they get started. On the flip side, again, uh, the Cougars do a good job in matching up and not allowing the cutbacks by Holton, and they've been able to really control Holton so far. Other than the fumble carry, they've been doing a good job on that. Only one on that play, second down and nine. Again, they go with the fullback, breaks the tackle, and finally wrapped up by Chris Buback, an outside linebacker, but not after a good game on second down. Jeff Adam was a tailback last year. They moved him to fullback. He's not big, but he runs really hard. And he has nearly 1,000 yards rushing. He's the top rusher on the team as he sets his team up with third down and a couple of yards to go. He's a good, he's a fine, he's a good, fine running back. He runs hard, low center of gravity. Those are the type of plays you can hit Adam, Jeff Adams with, is those quick hitters. And with the initial leg drive, Kevin, he makes a lot of good things happen. Third down and two. Adam with the first down and a lot more as he breaks free. And we're all even at six. Jeff Adam, touchdown. <laughs> Right here, just a quick hitter by Adams. Goes right through, and the safety overruns the play, and Adams has nothing but turf in front of him. Good cut, good vision by running back Adams. And the extra point is up and good by Ryan Dolan, and Salina South takes the lead at 7-6, 4-41 before halftime. So big third down and two run at 37 yards by Jeff Adam, 172 pound senior, scores his 17th touchdown of the season, and the Cougars on top for the first time. Hey, that first wave of linemen, what happens on that, everybody condensed, everybody's on top right there. You can see the Tigers right there on the line of scrimmage, short yardage play, linebacker overruns the play, and so does the safety, and they can find Jeff Adams, number 21, finding the end zone. Good play, they run behind that big offensive line on the right side. Nelson Ritter, those guys, Clint Woods, a tight end on that side. Good play, I tell you what, this Jeff Adams, is a, he's a sound quality young man. And Tyler Newton leaving the field. He helped off by the folks at Blue Valley. 
parents there and his dad brothers there and we wish him all the best as the kick away and this is going to be via jolie out to the 31 and hauled down right there craig durfee good special team stop for the cougars the tigers will get it back down by a point via jolie's had a nice game returning the football playing on special teams in the secondary as well yeah, he's been active. Number four, Bia Jolie, has been every, just about everywhere on the football field. When there's the ball, you find out where number four is. Receiver near side is Chris Matson. Got to go on the ground to hold him. And oh my, is he blown up? Flax, Googler, also. Some other guys from the defensive line. I'll tell you what, you saw a lot of yellow helmets in the backfield. Watch how the defensive line gets the push, shoves the block. There you can see Ryan, number 57, shoves the block. Googler, number 74. He's up there, upfield. When you find there are many men, there are many white shirts on the other side of the ball, they're just blowing up the play before it even starts. Holton had no chance. The other guy that was there was Jake Ryan, the nose tackle. Loss of one, second down and 11 for the Tigers. Waters rolling near side. And the pass going to be intercepted by Ryan Dolan for the Cougars. Nice interception by number three, junior Ryan Dolan, and the Cougars have it back in good shape. Dolan steps in front of Oliver, the intended receiver. You can see the rollout rolling right, excuse me, rolling left by Waters. Doesn't square his shoulders away, doesn't square his shoulders. And the defender steps right in front of the receiver. There you go, number three, Ryan Dolan does a good job of actually waiting on the ball and getting the interception. First interception of the season for Ryan Dolan. First and ten from the 24 now for the Cougs. The pitch out, cutting hand, nice shake and bake, gets to the 20 yard line. Chris Buback, Biagioli there to take him down, but not after a solid gain on first down. And he's going to get about five yards in the play. That was a good play, good read by Cunningham. He makes the first guy move, makes the first guy miss the safety man. And that's, that's the guy who's got to make the play. The safety man has to be, be able to come up and make that play. That was positive yards by the Cougars. Good run. Second and five from the 19. Oh, Salinas Saad leading by one, trying to get more after the Dolan interception. Uh, this is big Jeff Adam breaking tackles inside the 10 down to the 8. First and goal, Salinas South. So number 21 making a big impact on this game now, Theotis. Jeff Adams runs very well inside the tackles. Kevin, if you watch him from line, if you watch him from the inside, he's running. He has good vision right there, running behind a big offensive line. See, look, his feet are still going. There's nobody that's touching him until it's five yards down the, down the field. So really credit that offensive line and moving the pile. Pitch it out on first and goal. Cutting hand with a nice cutback. Breaks a tackle. And Powell drives his way down to the one. Coughed up the football. Covered up in the end zone by guess who? Jeff Adam. Touchdown. Salina South. So Jeff Adam gets a cheapie. It's his 18th of the season. And it's now 13-6. Cougars. Johnny on the spot. Jeff Adams. As you can see, here's the pitch. This is the option coming out. Sims delivers a good option. There's no safety man right there. Cunningham sees it. Good tackle. Loses the ball on the one-yard line. And, of course, Johnny on the spot. Adams right there to pick it up. And Ryan Dolan, who started this drive with a big interception, adds the extra point. And it's now 14-6. Salina South. Another look as Cunningham got near the one, and the ball got popped out. Right there, that last right there. hit by Bubeck. But Jeff Adam, right place, right time. Six more for him. And it's an eight-point lead now for the Cougars. Certainly the Cougars found a hot spot, and that's right up the middle. They got to sew that up on the Tigers' end. And it started making the key interception. Turnovers is big in field position. They were able to convert in that situation. Jeff Adam, two touchdowns here in the state title game, 18 for the season. 
all of a sudden, everything looking uh, yellow and green right now for the Cougars as they have seized momentum in this game. You know, Chad Harbor has brought up a good point. These both these teams can score over 30 points a game, and we thought, well, this looked like a defensive Donnybrook here. Seemed like nothing was happening. All of a sudden, the past couple of minutes, a couple of touchdowns by the Cougars. And a directional kick toward the left side. Biagioli from the 13 out to the 25. Wrapped up by Kyle Flax there on special teams. The Tigers get it back and kind of get some offense going after their last drive ended in an interception. And the Cougar side all jacked up right now as their team has really grabbed this game by the throat in the second quarter. And you can set the tone with special teams and Flack did it right there. A good open field tackle by a cornerback of free safety Kyle Flack. On first and ten, Holcomb breaks the tackle, gets to the 29, and then is whipped to the turf hard by Tyler Van Neyman, one of the defensive tackles. And they'll get three or four on the play as Coach Rampey on the side. Go to the state finals now six times, five in the 90s. Wow. Tells you the credit goes to he and his coaching staff have done a tremendous job building confidence for the program, the kids believing in the program, and kids executing the program. And don't worry about these guys as far as getting down in the game. They were down a couple occasions to Topeka Seaman by 10 points on the road and came back and won that one with 28 unanswered points as Holton takes it out to the 34-yard line. There's no question, Kevin, this team can score. They have, they have the ability to make big plays. They have the ability to make big plays on both the run and the pass game. So by no stretch of the imagination, you know, seven, eight points is not going to be a big difference in this ball game. Trail 10-0 to Topeka Seaman and 17-7 in the sub-state game in the capital city of Topeka. Third down and two. Facing Blue Valley. Holton, the cutback, has the first down and breaks free. Chase Holton in a foot race. There is a flag on the play as Quinn Cunningham knocks him to the chalk out of bounds. Uh, we have a flag to deal with back near the 45 yard line. And Ken Stonebreaker consulting with the white hat, Randy Finest, and it's coming back. Wow, that's too bad. We talked about it being in the run game in the pass game. And it is a hold. Randy Finef working with Stan Sawyer, David Kaufman, Chris Kaufman, and Wayne Witt as we go back to see if we can find the holding penalty. It's probably on the wide receiver on the outside. Holton right there gets inside, and they're holding right there at the top of your screen, the top left. Basically, boy, he rode him hard, too. Holding on the offense. It'll be third down. And Dustin Redazel with a wrestling type move there to seal the corner for Holton. But Randy Finef and his staff were able to catch the play. And it's going to be third down and 12 when they've walked it off, although Coach Rampey still wanted an explanation. I think what happened under the defender got caught up. Holton dipped inside, which forces the, the, the uh, linebacker to turn his back and go inside. Of course, the offensive lineman hit him from behind. You can't do that. But as we talked about, this team has the ability to make big plays in the run game and the pass game, Kevin. And it'll be challenged here to be back to the 24, third down and 12 for the Tigers out of the shotgun. Waters setting up a screen to the opposite side to the days of the tight end makes a man miss and nearly gets the first down as he's taken down near the 35 yard line. A nice run after the catch by Redazel and it depend on the spot and it looks to be just a little bit short for Blue Valley. Tell you what Blake Barrett did a good job in staying with that play number five because if he doesn't make that tackle. Basil just goes on because it's a good play. It's the screen back to the other side. They set up the screen. It looks like they're going to go for it here, Kevin. Just a few seconds before halftime. Waters working out of the long count. Gives it to Holcomb, and he didn't get it. 
And now with four seconds, three seconds, clock winding down to two. It'll be stopped with a change of possession. And let's see if the Cougars can get some points out of this deal. So Salina South gets it back on downs at the 35 with two seconds to go in your first half. Do we go Hail Mary or do we just set up and try to kick it here? Well, my team's played You're so well. You're against the win, however. I'm against the win. I'm Coach Stonebreaker. I'm taking the knee. I'll just snap it and take the knee. If you're going to chuck it, it better be in the end zone. Yeah, I think they're going to try a Hail Mary here. One last try. After a timeout, the officials have called timeout on the field. Hey, sometimes you get lucky in this game. Two seconds, yeah, that's enough time to get a playoff. They have four receivers to the near side. Bunch set. Now Sims throwing to the opposite side to Dolan. And the pass deflected away incomplete. Biagioli there on Dolan knocks it away. And we have reached halftime. Salina South out of the I-70 League. Leading Blue Valley out of the Eastern Kansas lead 14 to 6. High V at the half comes your way next. You're watching high school football in the 5A state championship on Metro Sports. Back at halftime, good to see Tyler Newton with a smile on his face back on the field and watch his Tigers in the second half after what appears to be a broken wrist on a long reception in the first half. As he's out there to cheer his guys on as we send it down to Chad with the head coach of the Tigers, Steve Rampey. What did you tell your players at halftime? They got two quarters left and we're not playing the way we can play. We got to do a better job up front of moving them and create some running lanes for our guys to run in and uh, just get off the ball harder. We're not getting off the ball. And uh, defensively, we played okay, except for the right, we got a couple breakdowns there at the end, but we got to do a better job up front and off. Seems like Chase just not finding any kind of open running room. Yeah, a little tentative early, and he ran hard there a couple times there at the end, but we're just not getting holes for him. You know, that's a credit to their defense. They play pretty hard, and they get off, the, they get off blocks, and we're just not maintaining things. All right, good luck in the second Thank half. Steve Rampey, the head coach at Blue Valley High. Kevin, back to you. Okay, thanks, Chad. Uh, let's take a look at Ken Stonebreaker talking it over with Quinn Cunningham. Star running backs is... They're up 14 to six over the Blue Valley Tigers. And they're gonna have the football to start things in the second half as they won the toss to further option to the second half. There's a lot of folks here today on both sides. Wow. With the communities of Stowell and Salina and well, really represented well. And the wind uh, keeping everybody bundled up though. That wind's still going strong from the south around 20 to 30 miles an hour. A little chilly in places. Take a look at the University of Kansas flag. Uh, been whipping pretty strong throughout the day as we send it back down to Chad now. Thank you, Kevin. I think emotionally it's very good for Blue Valley. That Tyler Newton has come back out onto the field wearing the splint and the sling and having ice on it. And when he came out, he talked to his head coach, Steve Rampey. He said, Coach Rampey, the bad thing was I got caught from behind. And Steve Rampey said, you wouldn't have got caught if you would have just scored the touchdown. And they both got a <laughs> chuckle out of it. So I think that Tyler Newton is feeling much better than he was when he obviously left the field in quite a bit of pain. And it will be big for Blue Valley to have him back on the sidelines in the second half. Very good point, Chad, as we get ready to go with the third quarter. And uh, the Otis, uh, what are you expecting for this second half of this Donnybrook in 5A? Pretty much the same thing as Coach Man Rampey uh, uh, said earlier during, the, during his interview. They got to do a better job up front, moving the Cougars on the line of scrimmage. This is where their strength is, is on the line of scrimmage. One of the reasons why Chase Holtham hasn't been able to see any lanes is because the Cougars have been able to fill them. Gino Waters got to step up and play a little bit better. He had a couple of inter had an interception on a ball that was uh, technically wasn't thrown very well. But they have to play very good, sound, fundamental football. And one of the things that Stone Breaker, Breaker excuse me, wanted to talk about was the turnovers, and they've been able to do to do that. As far as keys of the game, as you can see, Tyler Newton with his cast on, and uh, field position. They've been able to execute in good field positions and converting the big plays and the big op big play opportunities. They've been able to do that also, Kevin. They're reenacting the coin toss, but once again, Salinas South won the coin toss to further option in the second half. 
So they're going to get the football to start things in the third quarter. Once again, the scores for Salina South. They got a 37-yard touchdown run by Jeff Adam. And then a fumble recovery in the end zone by Jeff Adam. Lone score for Blue Valley was a seven-yard touchdown pass on a slant from Gino Waters to Brian Oliver. Their kicker, Tyler Newton, out with an injury, so they went for two, and the two-point conversion was missed. So it's 14-6, to six, and there's Jeff Adam. He's had the big ball game thus far, the fullback for Salina South. Uh, he's been solid in the first half, running inside, running hard, giving his team an opportunity to make positive yards and make positive, positive plays, Kevin. And you, will con and you will see that in the second half, too. That's the kind of guy, he's their leading rusher, so he knows this situation. And so does Coach Rampey and the Tigers. They know what it is to be behind because they've done it this year. This team plays with a lot of poise, the Blue Valley Tigers. They're going to have to rally in the second half. They want to capture their third state title. Tigers winning in 91 and 98. The line of South in 2000. Final 24 minutes put on the board as Dane Hammond has taken over as kicker for the Blue Valley Tigers. Short kick, field at the eight by Quinn Cunningham. Down the right hash. Steps to the outside. Denning trying to track him down. And he'll get him down just as he gets to the 30-yard line. The first and 10 for Luke Sims on the Salina South Cougars offense. There's the rushing day for Quinn Cunningham, second leading rusher on the team. Cunningham has given him some positive uh, impact in the backfield. 5.7 yards per carry. That's pretty good at any length of the field. And uh, he's been able to do that for his team. Give it to the fullback, Adam. Lunging out to the 34-yard line. He'll give it up. Top four on the play. It'll be second down and six. So you go with the quick hitter to Adam. Cunningham's the speed guy to the outside. We've seen Sims throw it around a lot a bit. Had a couple interceptions, though, in the first half. Well, Kevin, the Cougars have had, they had a lot of success getting the ball to the perimeter in the first half. And, uh, and I wouldn't be surprised if they continue to pound the sidelines and pound the, 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 the outside of the ball uh, for them. There's Jeff Adam again. And he drives a pile of tacklers up near the 38-yard line. And picked up about five. It's going to be third down and short. So Adam, not the biggest guy in the world, 5'8", 172, but he packs a punch. He certainly does. And he brings a low center of gravity, number 21. But he's running behind that big offensive line and Ritter, Nelson, Rimmer, uh, Anderson, and McGraw. Those guys are moving that pile giving him an opportunity to make some positive yards, Kevin. They're down at two. This is Adam. First down and more. Coughed up the football. Ball on the deck. Big pile up. And the guys pointing to say they have the ball just drilled the official right in the face with their hand. It's Blue Valley football. I think Bubeck got on it. Yes, Chris Bubeck has covered it up. Wow. Did you see that, Theodos? This guy is saying, our ball, our ball. Jabbed the official right in the eye. Here it is, here's Adams running, running hard inside. We talked about the tough yardage. There's no one, he gets into to the second level and stripped right there. Michael the Denning. Michael Denning, Johnny on the spot, rips it out. As you can see right here as the ball and watch the official gets <laughs> corked in the face. Oh, wow, wrong place at the wrong time, huh? Hey, Justin Knutson, watch uh, your uh, arms there. He's running the football after the turnover. Chase Holtum for uh, three yards on the play, but it was Denning that dislodged it. Bubeck got it. Knutson whacked the official. <laughs> Blue Valley has it all back and down by eight, trying to get back in it, facing second down and seven. Uh, Knutson said, if I can't hit anybody, let me hit the official. <laughs> wow. From the 45, Gino Waters. Real pass. The snow a little behind the intended target. Oliver reels it in as Quinn Cunningham. Takes him to the field turf. Brian, get it down to the 41. Excuse me, Kevin. Brian Oliver runs a quick slant. The ball's thrown behind him. He leads him a, li a little bit more and have a better opportunity to make more positive yards. Here it is. A three-step drop and throw. The ball's thrown behind the intended receiver. 
Good concentration by Oliver to stay with the pass and with the play. It goes for four. It'll be third down and two. Stretch play, Holton. Nothing doing. Blake Barrett, Kyle Flax would have none of it. And it's going to be fourth down and still about a yard and a half, two yards. I look like there was a lane there. And there was a penalty flag in the play. And Randy Finef says holding Blue Valley. This will kill our momentum and a drive every single holding time. On the offense. Repeat third down. Now instead of it being third and short or fourth and short, now it's third and 12. Blue Valley now with 36 yards and penalties. Facing third and 12. Back to the 49 on their side of the 50 yard line. Here's where you miss a Newton at this time. This is their go to guy. The other guy's got to step up and they've done a good job thus far. They have to step up and make some plays right now. Out of the shotgun, rolling right. Waters, the pass, too tall, looking for Andy Shorten. It's incomplete. And the Tigers will have to punt it away. Waters was pressured right there. Another bootleg type of action. They roll out, roll them right, and they're trying to hit the corner route with the receiver. And he was covered. And so right there on the on-stretch hands, he was open, but just a little bit high. They had a bracket coverage. Waters to punt it away on fourth and long, and this one will bound in the end zone for a touchback. So well, Blue Valley can't capitalize on the Jeff Adam fumble on the touchback. It'll be first and ten. Salina South at their own 20. If you take a look at Geno Waters and head coach Steve Rampey talking things over. Once again, the Cougars are going to be looking at the multiple sets and trying to spread the um, the Tigers defense. The Tigers defense actually Kevin's done a good job up front. It's just the perimeter they need to sew up on. Out of the eye and first and ten. Pitches back to Cunningham. And he goes for a quick seven for Dane Hammett and Michael Dane get him. But ever since the second quarter, this running game for the Cougars has been kicking in gear. This is just a sweep. There's an option pitch. The quarterback Sims finds Cunningham. There's not a safety there. He breaks the first wave of tacklers, runs through the arm tackle. Cunningham does a good job and a good first down play. I give him six in the play. Second down and four for Salina South. This is Jeff Adam. Good second effort. And close to a first down near the 30. Be about a yard shot. Third down and short for the Cougars of Salina South, 11 and 1 on the year. Lone loss to Salina Central back in week two, 30 to 27, but they got the payback in Substate, beating the Mustangs of Salina Central 17 to 10 in a turnover filled ball game. Third and less than a yard, quarterback sneak. Luke Sims, first down, Salina South. Ah, uh, Sim does a good job and just knifes himself between, wedges himself between the guard and tackle and uh, Ross Ritter and, and, and uh, Thomas Reamer. And they done a good, they did a good job of really moving the pile and securing that line of scrimmage. And you get that play. Luke Sims, number four quarterback, did a good job and just buckling up and getting behind those big wide bodies. Sims also an outstanding golfer, state medalist, usually shoots in the 70s, works at a golf course, the Elks Country Club there in the Swan area. End around play. This is Dolan breaking a tackle down the sidelines, turning on the Jets. Look out. He is going to take it to the house. Touchdown, Jason Dolan. 69 yards, and it's now 20 to 6. Salina South. Jason Dolan does a good job on his cutback. Here they have the receiver on the cutback. Here's the wall. He makes the first guy miss that we talk about. Then it's just a foot race all the way to the end zone, and he can see the defenders trying to catch him. But Dolan has the speed to get to the outside and for the touchdown. And now Ryan Dolan will tack on the extra point. 
And it is 21 to 6. Jason Dolan, his ninth touchdown of the season. Big play guy, 4 6 speed, and he uses all of it on this play. It makes a good cut, stifles, really sews up the, the safety, goes inside, bites the inside cut. Dolan bounces outside and hits all the way to the end zone, shows great speed and the ability to get outside. They've had a lot of success, Kevin, all day long of getting to the perimeter, getting to the second level, and getting to the outside for the uh, uh, for positive yards. First team, all I-70 wide receiver, Jason Dolan. It's his team up now by 15 points. As Coach Rampy's team gonna have to rally. That's a great play where they where they were with that action. They motion the receiver and they just hand the ball off to him. And just a that's just a simple sweep. And he was able to get outside. They really sealed the outside. What he did, he dipped inside, which held the safety, and they bounced it outside. It was just a foot race from there on. Biajoli from the 18-yard line with the Blue Valley return. Breaks a tackle, still on his feet. And track down. Actually, it looked like by the kicker, Orion Dolan. Nice return out to the 35. It'll be a 17-yard return. And the Tigers need to get going offensively. And they trail 21 to 6 with under 7 to play in the third quarter here in the 5A state title game. Here's where your offensive line really has to really put things together, Kevin, and really buy some, give your quarterbacks an opportunity to make plays. Your receivers have to step up, but this team is capable of doing that. They've done it before all year long. I wouldn't see anything, any other reason why they couldn't do it today. Play action by Waters. Now under duress, gets away from Dugler. Will tuck and run. Out across the 40. And looks like he's near the 44-yard line as we send it down to Chad Harberts. Thank you, Kevin. It is championship weekend in Missouri and Kansas. Kearney, Blue Springs, and Olathe North have already won state championships. Blue Valley and Park Hill trying to do the same. And if it's championship weekend, that means next Friday is the seventh annual All-Metro Sports Football Show, where we will crown the best high school football players from across the metro area, the offensive and defensive players of the year, and the coaches of the year. It's all next Friday at 7.30 on Metro Sports. And on second down, it's short. Tom Sellers says hello to Chase Holtum and denies him the first down. It'll be third down and short. Sellers have been steady all game. He's been able to plug up the holes and really have really stifled waters before he had an opportunity to make positive yards. You like that in your linebackers. He's been able to stuff the run and get penetration before they were able to get going, get things going, Kevin. We're going to measure here, but it looks to be just a little bit short. Well, no. eyes are bad. It is a first down by the nose of the football. Don't worry about it, Kevin. It, it comes with age. First the eyes, then the mind. There you go. <laughs> yep. I think I'm already into the mind thing. <laughs> so from the 45-yard uh, line, first and 10, quarterback option. Waters the pitch out to Holton. Trying to get outside. Nice stop by Clint Woods. The strong safety comes up and limits the play to maybe a yard. Clint Woods, senior, 83 total tackles. He's a big hitter for this team. Number 24, Clint Wood, does a good job in stringing the uh, the running back. When you get those running backs going sideways, especially a guy like Holton, who does a good job of running forward, but going sideways is not his strength. This is where they they have the edge. The Cougars is making those guys run sideways. Second down and nine. Holton, your lone back. Three-step drop. The slant to Oliver. Turns it up the field. Gets hit hard by Blake Barrett, the linebacker. Takes him down right at the first down stake at the 45-yard line in South Territory. I'm not going to comment either way. It's close to a first down. Now they say first down. Okay, first down. Blue Valley. Kevin, you don't trust your eyes no, my, my friend? Eyes, okay. why, that's why I bought these high-powered binoculars this week. Mm -hmm. Good combination. Waters and Oliver have been good all day long. First and 10. Holton with a seam off the left side. Breaking free. Foot race to the end zone, won by number 20, Chase Holtum. It's a 45-yard touchdown run for the senior tailback, Chase Holtum, and it's now 21-12. 
What did I tell you, Kevin? It was just a matter of time when he continues to pound it in there. He's running behind that Bob. Bob Bennett and, o and One and Nick Speed, those guys up front, is doing a good job. He runs behind that left side of the line of scrimmage. And you can see it sees the hole right there. And it's just a burst of speed. It's just a foot race all the way to the end zone. Good play call, good line blocking by that offensive line for the Tigers. Good vision by Holton. Touchdown. Touchdown number 23 on the season for Chase Holton. One away from tying the school record. Owned by Andy Murray, who scored 24 in the season. They go for the two-point conversion after a penalty. Like the left side of the line. The wrong count there. They jumped early. Well, this is what happened in the, the first time they tried to go for two. There was a penalty, and they backed them up a little bit. But it just changes the whole complexion of the game when your place kicker is out of the football game. And Tyler Newton is, is that guy. On the offense, replay the try. Tyler Newton, their first team all state kicker, all league wide receiver. Suffered what appears to be a broken wrist in the first half, so they don't have any confidence in their backup kicker. They'll go for a two point conversion, try to make this a seven point difference from the eight with the penalty. Waters. Now we'll take off and hit as he throws. Now it's picked off by Clint Woods. And the two-point conversion try is denied. So we'll stay at 21-12. 5-19 to play in your third quarter here in the 5A state title game. But you got to think Blue Valley gets a little momentum boost with that Chase Holton touchdown run of 45 yards. And that's certainly right, Kevin. When, you, when we talked about what they can do, the ability that these Tigers have and the, with the ability to run the football and make big plays and throw the football and make big plays, really don't count these guys out because that's what they're, that's what they're capable of doing. They did, did just that with Chase Holton, 45-yard uh, touchdown drive. They ask any sports enthusiasts what fall means in Kansas, and they'll tell you football, volleyball, cross country, and soccer. The best in entertainment, sportsmanship, and community involvement will unfold during the next few months. These activities will give fans the opportunity to show how much pride they have in our youth, to talk about their accomplishments, and support our school's student body, the faculty, and the administration. Public service message from the Kansas State High School Activities Association and Metro Sports. Kevin White, Fiotis Brown, Chad Harberts. KU's Memorial Stadium, the 5A state title game. We're in the second half, and the kick away, fielded by one of the up men, will be Craig Durfee on the return. And they'll take it out near the 33-yard line. And young Tyler Newton, all smiles. That's good to see, because he was in a great deal of pain when he fell, and looks like he broke his wrist there in the first half. He's certainly a talent that they will miss, and we talked about him not only in the kicking game, but also in the passing game, because he puts that much pressure on you, on you as a as a receiver, because he runs good, sound, disciplined routes. And uh, how about that cap that Tyler is wearing? Looks like the same cap he had when he was like 10 years old. Chad made a good point at halftime. His presence on the sideline was definitely going to lift the spirits of his teammates who were worried about him. Adam, the fullback, breaking tackles. Oh, my. Oh, what a run out to the 45-yard line. A 12-yard run by Jeff Adam, who would not be denied. They run from the, what we call the, the, the kind of the wishbone offense, the flex, and here he is running from ground level, breaking tackles, arm tackles, left and right, and players just bouncing off of Jeff Adams, number 21. This kid has run hard all throughout the game, and he's run very well between the tackles. There you see his day. Wow. Nine yards per carry, two touchdowns for Jeff Adams, who's a converted tailback. Not big, the coach says, but boy, does he run hard. Boy, you can never tell. That was a great example on that last play. Wow, he's just training him up. He's over 1,000 yards on the season, 18 touchdowns for senior Jeff Adam. On first and 10, they go back with number 21, Adam. Corralled from behind by Justin Knutson, the defensive end. Short yardage on this one. <laughs> You watch Adams on that play, just runs over his offensive tackle, lays him right in the back. God, I remember I did that to Rich Baldinger one time. He didn't talk to me for a month. <laughs> These guys never forget. No, no, never do. Second down, eight yards to go out of the eye formation. Pitch it out. This is Quinn Cunningham. Dane Hammett, the outside backer. 
That's the shirt tackle. And Hammond is their leading tackler. Now they got third and state in wrestling, one of the toughest guys on the team. Only goes a buck 56, but he'll knock you in the next week. And he's one of those guys that don't look at him and say, boy, this is a small guy, but this guy can play. That's right. And Dane Hammond has to make that play because he's the, he is the support guy on the option play, on the outside play. He hasn't been there most of the day, but on that particular play, he stopped that play from really making big yards. Only one gain on the play. Third down and seven. BB would like to get a three and out. Now Sims with time to throw. Over the middle, too tall and incomplete. As they were looking for, it looked like Quinn Cunningham on a crossing route. Almost deflected. Or on the rebound, almost got to Clint Woods. As he was the... Receiver in the second wave there behind as we take another look. Here's a rollout by quarterback Sims. He sees he sees number 24, overthrows him. Ball comes up short in front of the intended receiver, but actually overthrows his intended receiver. But a good coverage by the uh, the Tiger defense. Punting time. Craig Durfee in punt formation for the Cougars. Low line drive. Biagioli back to the 15-yard line with the return. Good blocking. Biagioli across the 30 to the 32. And a 17-yard return for junior Nick Biagioli. If it happens in Kansas City on the sports scene, you'll see it on the Metro Sports Zone with one of Kansas City's favorite sons, Dave Stewart. It's late live and local every Monday from Thursday night at 10, the Metro Sports Zone, where you get more than the score only on Metro Sports. 21-12 is your score. Blue Valley trailing, 3.22 to play in your third quarter, and they'll have it back after the nice return. Officially spotted at the 33. Play action by Waters. And the pass complete to the tight end, and Diesel breaking free. Down inside the 35, near the 33, the tight end, Dustin Redazel. Dustin Rizdazel does a good job in concentrating, but what a good pass that quarterback number seven, Gino Water, delivers. He rolls out right. As you can see, they fake the run with Holt and Chase, and then here comes the quarterback, comes, finds the, their tight end number 83, Rizdazel, on a, on a kind of a drag route. Good play call, good throw by Waters. 34 yards, first and 10, Waters the pump. Now going with the fade, looking for Oliver. Can't run under it, it's incomplete. Wow, the pump fake, pump fake everybody out except for the official. Like the defender grabbed him, but I don't blame him. You'd rather grab him and save for another play because he was beaten on that play. And it is defensive holding, Gildas, good call. You know, we talked about how much success they've had in running the kind of the fade route with the receiver. This time they run the same kind of look. They pump the fake, and then the receiver goes behind the defender. Defender had no other choice but to grab him. Holding on the defense. First down. Watch right here. They've been running this fade route. Agent Waters pumps right there, freezes everybody and just barely mi missed him. The reason he missed him because he was held. Oliver was held on that play, but a good play call. So after the penalty, the first and 10 from the 23 for Blue Valley. Trailing by nine as he's playing the late stages of the third quarter. Stretch it to Holton, good move. Gets to the 20 and gets hammered down by Woods and Flax. And the temper starting to flare after the play. And it'll be a gain of three. It'll be second down and seven. Flax can uh, bring it. Yeah, Flax brought it that time. He stretched hold them out, made him run wide. Here's a straight handoff on the touchdown run that he had before. He stretches him out, stretches him out, and lays a leather right there. Boy, there's some bone crackling and some helmets clanging. And there's a knee job right there. And that's why and that's I, a, yeah, I would get Bolton mad was too. very mad. Yeah. Get off my knee, will you? Now wow. the knee into your face mask. Quarterback draw. Waters, good move. Steps to the outside. And he's escorted out of play by Ryan Fritz, a defensive end for Salinas South. After a 
Gain of about two on the play. It's going to be third down and five facing Blue Valley. Kevin, that's a set play where they had a quarterback draw because Waters, good athlete, very good athletic. He plays defense, plays in the secondary. So he has good speed and good quickness. Rampy is not afraid to call a quarterback draw any time in this part of the field in the red zone. Big down and distance. Third down, long four, short five. Waters the pump. Going with the fade again. The receiver is taken down. The ball is intercepted. Flags in the play. Flax with the interception, his eighth of the season. Still on his feet. And finally taken down by Dustin Redazel. But let's see what the penalty flag is all about. The probably, receiver was taken down. Yeah, probably the same call they had before. They used the pump fade once again. The, the, def the defensive back is not biased. He's biting on everything short because he's been beaten short and they pump fake him again and he tackles him. There's no question that he got tackled. I think they're saying illegal use of hands is the call as we check in with Randy Fina. And Coach Stonebreaker can't believe it. No, he's animated. He said. I just read his lips. He said unbelievable. Well, he's probably saying the ball was not catchable. But as you can see right here, Waters, there's the pump bait right there. Number nine, Oliver's already on the ground already. He was tackled by the defender. Coach, I understand, is unbelievable. Illegal use of hands on the defense. First down. So that was third down, five yards to go. And the penalty gives him the first down after Flax had picked it off. And he's denied his eighth interception of the season. And it'll be first and goal now for the Tigers just inside the nine-yard line. Trailing by nine points. Under two to play in your third quarter. And now whistles halting things. And the officials having a confab. Everything's good to go, we think. First and goal now for Blue Valley. Here we go. Trying to close the gap. Holt him on a cutback. Inside the five, down near the three before Woods takes his legs out. Holt him that time looked like he wanted it. He ran hard. He saw the hole, and he just went right for it. That's the kind of run that they need from this young man throughout the, the course of the game is that type of hard running. When there's nothing there, you got to see the hole, man. You got to take it. Good run, good surge by that offensive line also. Second and goal. Just outside the three-yard line. Holton cut down by his legs. Clint Woods, nice play there. Got in and he's injured. As he got in and got the legs out of Chase Holton. And it'll be third down and goal. And Woods is a tough character. He's going to stay out there, but he's in some pain right now. That was a good play. The, the Tigers run at the room with the power eye. The fish is time on the field. But they run with the power eye, and Clint Woods just knifes through and really stops the runner before he gets going. Good play by Woods. Knifing through from the outside. Fisher's timeout is over. They spin the clock. Under a minute to play in your third quarter. Blue Valley facing third and goal from the two-yard line. Power eye set. Waters on the roll. Gino throwing to the back of the end zone, and he finds Drew Bauer. Touchdown, Blue Valley. They hit the backup tight end. And let's see, the officials are huddling here as we have flags in the end zone. And an ineligible, ineligible man downfield. So a lineman got down the field, and it negates the two-yard touchdown pass to Bauer. Well, typically that'll happen when your quarterback rolls out, and he's buying time, he's buying time. Kind of reminds you of Joe Montana. But those big offensive linemen don't see the line of scrimmage. And those will receive her downfield on the offense. Repeat third down. And they get lost in the shuffle there, and all of a sudden they start creep, creeping on beyond the line of scrimmage. Good vision, good hustle by Waters, but 
a legal man downfield. It is a five-yard penalty, so it'll be now third and goal from the seven for Blue Valley. Three-step drop, and the slant is broken up, looking for Shorten, and Clint Woods came up and whacked Shorten and knocked it free. And it'll be fourth down and goal. Boy, Clint Woods is wow. scaring the wow. three step drop. out of these receivers, just isn't a, he? Just a quick slant. Oh, oh, there's Clint right there. Clint Woods, number 24, delivers a blow as the ball gets there. That's a tough route. You run that, you run that quick slant. You'd like to see the ball before then, but you got it. You know you're going to get hit. You might as well catch the football. Geno Waters to try a 24-yard field goal. Line drives it through. You see the officials, they were like ducking. Boy, that baby was a heater. And just over the crossbar, and it's now 21 to 15. Wow, watch the action of this ball. Here, right in the middle of the screen, watch it goes from right, from left to right. Wow. Well, that's a nice balada kind of action. That's a missile. Man. Yeah. <laughs> and you see Newton looks at him like, wow. Good job. But how did you get it over? Tyler is the regular kicker. Tyler Newton, number five. Once again, broke his wrist or arm in the first half. Geno Waters doing it all. Quarterbacking, punting, playing defense as an interception in the game. And now kicking field goals. Officially make it 23 yards. And the Tigers creep a little bit closer, Theodos. Well, it was actually the, the Cougars did a good job of not allowing the Tigers to get into the end zone. So on that win, from that end, they look like they win, but good the Tigers put something on the board to keep the momentum on their side. Kick away, taken by Quinn Cunningham for the Cougars across the 30. Still moving the football up the field. Bubeck, a nice open field stop on the special teams. of Cunningham might have taken the distance as he gets his legs wrapped up near the 35-yard line. 26 yards on the return, and Carolina South gets it back with only six seconds to go in your third quarter. Well, Chris Bubeck saved the day because he doesn't make that tackle. Cunningham is still running. Some good open field tackling in today's ball game, Kevin. No question about it. Both these teams have excellent defenses. Allow under 10 points per game. Take the end around, give it to the fullback. Jeff Adam, high stepping, carrying Jeff Bauer, or Drew Bauer with him. Look at this. Oh, oh, oh. My gets goodness. the crowd fired up as Jeff Adam says, everybody jump on board. I'm going to take you for a ride. And I'm going to go for about 12 yards in the first down to end things here Ooh. in the third quarter. Stick around. This one should be good. The 5A state championship. And the final 12 minutes, the fourth quarter next here on Metro Sports. to the fourth quarter now at Memorial Stadium at the University of Kansas in Lawrence. Kevin White, Fieldus Brown, and Chad Harberts with you for the 5A state title game for 2003. Carolina South got a 69-yard end-around touchdown run by Jason Dolan in the second half. Blue Valley's countered with a touchdown run of 45 yards by Chase Holdem and a field goal by Geno Waters. And the lead is at six with the final 12 minutes on the board. For Ken Stonebreaker and Salinas out looking for their second state title in the new millennium. Slant pass wide of the mark, looking for Dolan well behind him. And it's going to be second down and 10. You know, Kevin, just before the end of the quarter, that last run by Jeff Adams, that was a kind of an attitude run. I mean, he just stepped it up and, and they, he drug, you know, he drug defenders for seven and eight yards and poor tackling on the Tigers end. You can't arm tackle. Uh, uh, Adams at all because he's that kind of a guy and uh, he runs hard and you know that so you got to wrap him up and rally around that ball. Line of scrimmage to 47. And you take a look at the big fullback. He gets it again and they're able to 
limit his run to a few yards. Michael Liu, inside linebacker, one of the strongest guys in the Blue Valley Tigers. Keeps him somewhat limited. I guess if you say six yards is limited. <laughs> well, as after the touch, you know, it's a lot of time you gauge a running back not for the yards that he gains, but when he gets hit, and it's the yards after the contact. And Adam's been doing a good job of getting, keeping his feet going after the contact. Third down and four. Pitch it back to Cunningham. Turns the corner. Has the first down. Coughs it up. Adam, right place, right time again. He's wrapped up from behind by Chris Buback. <laughs> oh, yeah. He's got a nose for the football. My goodness. Here you stuff to run. You get Cunningham, runs to the outside. Once again, this is this is Jeff Adams, kind of Johnny on the spot. Been running well all game, running inside well. He is dragging tacklers. They're bouncing off of him. There's stone breaking. There he goes right there, still stumbling and bumbling and still running through guys. And just poor tackling and the desire. Look at that run right there. And really, Johnny on the spot gets the touchdown and right here picks up another ball that was fumbled right there at the right, right place at the right time. Over 100 yards, two touchdowns, first and 10. Here is Adam backing his way near the 31 yard line. Let's go back to that last play as Cunningham cuts it up. Looks like he's going to get the first down, and all of a sudden, whoops, lost the ball. Good play. Wow, pops right into his arms. Can you ask? Talking about bagging your own groceries. Or two of his bouts to wow. Jeff Adam, but he knows what to do with it. Yeah, he headed north. And second down, seven. They run the option with Sims. He loses the handle. Ball in the deck. Piagioli covers it up. Blue Valley football. So they kept stripping, kept knocking it out, and Jeff Adam not there to save the day. Instead, it is Nick Biagioli with the fumble recovery for Blue Valley. Well, here's the fake. They get the option to the outside because they've had so much success running inside with Jeff Adams. They get it to the outside, and Jeff Knutson picks it up, strips the ball, and Biagioli gets right on it. But good job by Knutson of forcing the fumble. They were able to get outside because they've had so much success running, running back. Number 21, Jeff Adams in the middle. On the 21, here's Holton. And now they're going to go with their power game as Flax takes him down at the 25-yard line after a gain of four. So we've seen Adam on the Salina south side. Now we're going to see Holton in their power running attack The Blue Valley likes to attack you with. Well, that's no, there's no secret there. That's their bread and butter. And they're going to give it to Holton as much as possible. But Waters, your quarterback, has to step up and make plays. But so does everyone else. The offensive line got to secure. Got to be able to give him enough time to, to see downfield and make some positive yards, Kevin. On second and long, Holton steps out of a tackle. And now goes down the sidelines and has the first down as he rushes it out to the 35-yard line. And a gain of 10 yards on the play, so you'll move the chains for Blue Valley. Nine and a half to play in your state championship game. I'll chase Holton getting it going. I like this footwork right here. Here, the safety misses the tackle. Good footwork, keeps his balance, goes upfield for positive yards. This is what Chase Holton has to do. He has to make a guy miss, and if, he's, if he doesn't do that, he has to knife it and see, see what's going on up front and make some positive yards for his football team. Holton over 100 yards. First and 10, here is Chase again, nice moves, showing good footwork across the 40. Gang tackled at the 42-yard line. Kyle Flax there to lead the charge, also Quinn Cuttingham. But not after a gain of some seven yards, and big guy showing some nifty moves. He was off to a bit of a slow start. It seemed a little tentative in the first half, but he's right. found his groove. Well, he's found his groove because the offensive line has opened up some holes, those big guys. Oney, Bennett, Speed, and those guys up there uh, doing a good job, and you like what's going on up there to give Holton an opportunity to make some positive yards. Uh, flags pitched in before the snap. And procedure on the Blue Valley Tigers. Dead ball, false start on the offense. Repeat second down. Kevin, they've had a lot of success running that trap play where they bring the guard and a tackle around to fold, have the center and other, other onside guard blocked down and pull the offside guard and center, and Holton picks his hole. It's been, it's been open up front, 
So I like the way they bring in Denny, give them a kind of a change up. Second and nine after the five yard penalty. Here comes Michael Denning. Nice spin move by Denning as he gets it out near the 47 and a half yard line. And he'll get about 11 on the play and he'll move the chains first down Blue Valley. So once again, Holtham, the big strong back Denning got the quick moves and good moves. Yeah, it was good move. It was a broken play. It seemed like Denning was going one way and Waters was going the other way. But they end up with the, the thing is they end up with a positive yards because the good move by Denny. Denning stays in the backfield. He's a little bit quicker. Tough guy. Waters on the roll on first and ten. He'll just take off. And looks like uh, he decided I, I couldn't find my man there. I'm just going to run this one out and not uh, attempt a risky pass. No, and that was a good decision by Waters. There's nothing there. It's a tough pass anyway for a right-handed quarterback to roll to his left because you get nothing on the ball. As you saw in the first half with the interception, he was rolling to his left. Most right-handed quarterbacks can't do that. The only guy I know that was able to be successful was that was John Elway. He's the only one. He's one of the best ever. And Brett Favre. He's another one. But Brett Favre is a Hall of Famer. So. Yeah, he throws a lot of interceptions, though. Second down and eight after the two-yard run. Holton back in the backfield. They'll give it to Chase. Makes the first wave miss, but the second wave did not miss. Like big old Ben Googler wrapped him up. It's going to be third down and long facing the Blue Valley Tigers. Under eight to play for your state title. Jake Ryan, number 57, did a good job of blowing up that hole before Holton had an opportunity to see what was going on upfield. You know, we talked about Ryan, number 57 for the Cougars. Very, very athletic. Very tough to, to block because of his athleticism. Got good penetration on that play. Third down and eight. Big down and distance for Blue Valley. Trailing by six in the fourth quarter. Waters the pump. Now looking for Oliver trying to run under it. It's too long incomplete. Kyle Flax, Quinn Cunningham with the coverage in the Salina South secondary. And it'll be punting time. Fourth and eight for Blue Valley. Seemed like he had him open. Just led him just a little bit. That play has been there. They just haven't been able to, co to connect on that. Oliver was open, number nine. Just a simple fade route. He pump faked him again. And they're trying to kind of teardrop it between the, the corner and the safety. Waters, the quarterback, slash punter. He'll punt this one away against the win. Take the Blue Valley hop. Fielded by Quinn Cunningham, and he's blown up. The ball came loose. Andrew Chris with a special team stop. Big scrum. No official signal yet as they're trying to separate the players fighting for the football. This is big. And it's going to stay with Salina South. And the Cougars get it, but deep in their own territory with 7-11 to go here in your ball game. As a fan, you have a right to enjoy good sportsmanship as well as a responsibility to practice it. Let's remember that at all high school sporting events, it's the student athlete who's supposed to be the center of attention, not the fan in the stand. Good sports are winners because the object of the game is to have fun. A public service message from the Kansas State High School Activities Association and Metro Sports. Kevin, it's a big set of downs for the Tiger defense. If they can hold them here, they will get good field position. Jeff Adam, the carry, right up the gut. <laughs> the whistles are blowing. He's still <laughs> grinding away. <laughs> Boy, this they, kid is tough. They don't have an answer for him. They haven't thus far in today's game. He's been very active, even, even after the whistles have been blowing. Adam's just been tough, just been tough to bring down. He's hard to knock off his feet. Good balance, good center, low center of gravity kind of runner. Runs downhill. Second down and eight. On the option pitch, back to Cunningham. And Blue Valley there to string it out. Cody Scribner there, Chris Bubeck. And it's going to be third down and long facing the Salina South Cougars. Solid defense by the Tiger defense. They string it out. Sims had no other chance but to, you know, just to get it out there and pitch it out. Rushing yards, Salina South 262, Blue Valley 152. And Salina South, Kevin, is a, is a passing team. They like to throw the football. Huge down and distance. Third down, seven. 
from the 17. Out of the eye. They pitch it back. Cunningham has blockers in front. Has the first down and more. Turning on the Jets. And they're not going to get him from behind. Quinn Cunningham will take it the distance. Touchdown. 83 yards. Now there is a flag down back in the play. Let's hear from the men in stripes. And Randy Finef, your white hat. It's coming back. Wow. You're talking about a deflator right there. Here you have an 83-yard run, and they've been having a lot of successful, a lot of success get into the perimeter. They did it just here. There's your hold it left side of your screen right there. There it is right there. They got the push from behind. Illegal block in the back on the offense. First down. So a legal block in the back is the call that waves off the 83-yard touchdown. But it gives them a new set of downs, Kevin, which is important because now the time is, uh, is the ally for the uh, Salina Cougars. First and 10, Salina. first and 10 from the 29-yard line in their own territory. As they're nursing a six-point lead here in the 5A state title game. They're making those safeties run today. Give it to Adam. Not much. Cody Scribner grabbed his legs, but he still surged forward for a couple. He get about three yards in the play. Second down at seven facing the Cougars. Tough run. In fact, they had him in the backfield for, for no gain. And he nice forward, forward and picks up four yards. There's a big set of downs for both sides, for both the Cougars and the Tigers. Second down, long six. Quinn Cunningham on the cutback. Wrapped up by Scribner and Short, Shorten. And also Andrew Chris there. The flag on the play back near the 31-yard line. Every time they run to the edge, it seems like there's a penalty flag. Well, the reason that happens is the lineman on the Tiger side is beating the offensive lineman to the spot. And so what ends up happening is the now the Cougars have to now grab the offensive player to, from getting to the ball. Holding on the offense. Repeat second down. And the holding penalty will make it second down and long. Line of scrimmage back to the 21-yard line. The Second and 18. Kevin and the Cougars. The Cougars have been having a lot of success getting to the edge. It's forcing those safeties to come up and make tackles. Give it on the end of the round. This is Dolan. He has a 69-yard touchdown run, but not this time. As Michael Denning, the free safety, one of their top tacklers, read that play well, number 22, and shut it down. Or maybe a gain of a couple of yards. It's going to be third down and long. Denny does a good job of stretching that play out and really running to the ball and making the sheer tackle. That is very difficult, but those safeties in this game versus this team, you're going to have to make tackles in the open field. And because they're able to get the ball, they're sealing the in man on the line of scrimmage and they're getting to the outside. Third and 16 out of the shotgun. Trips to the near side. Cunningham in motion to the near side. Sims stepping up, looking deep, and a pass just wide of the mark. Nice effort, though, by Jason Dolan, but he couldn't bring it in, and the Cougars will have to punt it away. Boy, talk about laying your body out. Why, good throw by the quarterback, Sims. He lays Dolan out. Dale Dolan makes a great effort for the ball, almost pulls it in. Good effort by the receiver, Dolan, number, number 30, or number 10. Greg Durfee to punt it away. He has the wind at his back. Under four to play. Long punt of 74. Just gets this one away. Biagioli will let it hit. And it'll take a Cougars hop down near the 35-yard line. As we send it down to Chad. 
Thank you, Kevin. Tyler Newton, I know you wish you were on the field right now, but I think being on the sidelines is probably helping your team out. Uh, yep, I had the choice to go to the hospital or stay here, and I'm not going to leave my team at a time like this. There's no way. Talk so. about what happened on the play. Uh, I stuck my arms out, and Gino, Gino throws it right at me. Uh, and then I'm too slow, so the guy caught me, and we both landed on my arm awkward. And I looked up, and you know, one one a good sight. So hopefully your Tigers can come back and get a victory, so your brothers will get off your back about the state title. Exactly, they will. They will. They will. Let right. you enjoy the rest of this game. Thanks, Tyler. Okay, thanks, Chad. After the 42-yard punt, Holtum keeps it on the ground and goes for a couple on the play to be second down at eight. Holtum out. Um, Michael Denning checking in for him. Change up right here. This is where the ball game is right here, Kevin. How well the guys do up front, giving Waters an opportunity to throw the football down the field. They need positive yards every single play. Toss sweep, short side, Denning on a cutback. Denning breaking into the secondary free. It's a foot race inside the 30, using the stiff arm. Still fighting inside the five, first and goal. Wow. What a run, Michael Denning. Wow. Kevin, we talked about the changeup. There it is. Good run right here, just a toss sweep to the right. Good cut by Denny. Breaks a tackle, then it becomes a foot race, and he legs it out. But he get hit on the 15-yard line to drag the defender all the way to the two, three-yard line. Good footwork by Denny. We talked about a 59-yard run, but we talked about Denny being the changeup guy. First and goal from the three. Tigers down by six. Under three to play for your state championship. Toss sweep. Holtum caught and thrown down. Nice tackle by Tom Sellers, the inside linebacker for Salina South. It'll be second and goal. This is where it's going to be man on man. This is where the five state, uh, five, the state champion, 5A state championship is going to be won right here in the trenches, Kevin. Man on man. Helmet on helmet and giving those guys as running backs some seam to look, some seam so they can have an opportunity to make some big plays. Still game two on the play. Down to the one, second down and goal. Power eye set. Give it to the fullback. And no signal. And they're going to be just a little bit short. They went with Casey Donahue. Big 255 pound junior, and now it's going to be a third down and goal at the half yard line. The Cougars are doing a good job up front. Ryan, J Jake Ryan, Googler, Fritz, Ben Malin, Shackelford doing such a good job and really knife stifling that hole. Hey folks, this is this is what champions are made of right here. Down to 90 seconds, third down and goal. Quarterback sneak, Waters gets it in. Gino Waters, touchdown, and we're all even at 21. Watch the surge. Waters gets behind that big offensive line. This has been their bread and butter, watching these big guys move people around. And he finds for the, he tries for the attempt. Waters the extra point. He got it through. 22-21, Blue Valley, 125 to go in the 5A state championship from KU. Kevin, is this fun or what? You lose your place kicker with a broken arm, and you come back with the backups. Waters gets the extra point, both extra points. This team is fired up. We talked about it, Rampy's football team, they've been in this situation before. They've come from behind to win football games. Down 21 to six in the second half. They've rallied back in front. It's 22-21, still a lot of time left. 125, and the Salina South Cougars can throw it around the lot. Yeah, don't count these, don't count Ken Stonebreaker's team out. The Cougars, Salina South Cougars, they can find a way because they have those type of athletes. They have good speed on the outside. This is a no huddle offense. They probably have all their timeouts remaining. And uh, they can make a lot of positive yards too. 
Last week it was 28 unanswered points by Blue Valley. This week, 16 unanswered to take the lead. 22-21, 1.25 to go for the 5A state crown in 2003. I'll tell you what, you know, you listen to uh, Coach Rampy before the game, they talk about, you know, he spoke about, hey, Ben, you know, keys of the game, enjoy the day. This has been fun. Hammett the kick away. And the ball is muffed by Adam, goes back and picks it up. And he'll power his way, the hard runner that he is, up near the 26-yard line. And that's where the Salina South Cougars will have it with 1.19 to play in your ball game, down by one. They have a good field goal kicker. They also will have the wind at their back with Ryan Dolan as their kicker. With all timeouts uh, on both sides remaining, this is where you got to be smart. Clock management is smart and getting out of bounds to stop that clock. But this is where the Tigers defense now got to be at the play like champions. Four receivers deployed out of the shotgun for Luke Sims. And now early movement as the left tackle, Andrew McGraw, stood up too early. And it'll be first and 15. You don't think these kids are feeling the pressure? Wow. Dead ball, false start on the offense. Still first down. Moved on the end of the line of scrimmage. The tackle moves before the snap count. They're going with an empty backfield, Kevin. Four receivers. Now Adam is in a slot to the far side as Sims the throw. And the pass is complete. This is Flax breaking one tackle. Then Bubeck escorts him out near the 28-yard line. Got about seven on the play. It'll be second down and eight facing Ken Stonebreakers. Salina South Cougars trailing by one here in the state title game late. Here on defense, you got to play smart. You got to be aggressive because you can't, can't allow the, the offense to catch balls in front of you and make positive yards after the catch. Second and eight. Sims under pressure, sack from behind. Drew Bauer collecting his fifth sack of the season and none bigger than that as the timeout quickly taken on the field. Drew Bauer does a good job of defeating his man, but this is really a coverage sack. There's a timeout on the field. This is really a coverage sack because Sims had no one to throw to. He was trying to buy some time. Right on the top of your screen, here's ready to throw. There's a man in his face, and here comes Bauer to clean up the, to clean up the dirty work. Number 99, right there at the right time. Team leader in sacks, Drew Bauer. Justin Knutson have done a great job. Now after the sack, it'll be third and 14 after the Cougar timeout. Kirkenmeyer, Bauer, Bass, and Knutson, those guys have to be able to put pressure on quarterback Sims to allow, to allow the secondary to really clamp down on their men. This is big time. This is what high school football Ke Kevin is really all about. Fans. Turn up the noise level on third down and 14. Out of the shotgun. Sims has time. Fires middle. Complete. Dolan with the catch. Has the first down. Then he's pushed back. And they are spotting him very close to the first down. Looks to have it. But we'll wait for the official spot of the pigskin. Again, the same drag route. The crossing route. The delay route for the receiver. The offensive line has given Sims time to throw the football. They go with the no huddle. First down it is. Clock is running. Under 50 seconds. Sims to the outside too tall as he was looking for Ryan Bradshaw. It's incomplete. Second down and 10 with 45 seconds to go for your state title. Tough for your quarterback to throw all the way from right to left, the wide side of the field. The ball hangs in the air a long time, which allows the defender to come underneath. That time he overthrew him. Kevin, so I, this has been a fun game, been fun to watch. I like the way uh, the Cougars are able to operate. They have big play capability. And Blue Valley hold. Well, will Solana South Valley here late. Second and 10 for Sims. Flat pass is caught. 
Dolan with the catch. Dubeck escorts him out. After a game of nine, stopping the clock with 39 seconds to go. Hey, all you have to do is get in field goal range here. Another 30 yards or so, maybe there's an opportunity. When they do catch the ball, you got to deliver a blow. Ryan Dolan, the kicker for Solana South, as long as 44 against Manhattan in a 27-14 win. Third and one, ball fumbled, and now it's covered up. It's going to be fourth down, and looks like two yards to go. At the clock at 36 seconds, and another timeout taken by Salina South. And they'll have one left. So Sims frustrated with the fumble exchange. Well, this is big. They've got to get the first down. And if they do get the first down in high school, the clock automatically stops on first down to set the change. And then it restarts back up once they get the change going. And they got to allow the chain gang to get set. That's Kurt Stonebreaker. Well, here you have to be poised, Kevin, with your quarterback, Sims. Um, and that is getting your team. Luke Sims, number four, the quarterback, had to get your team up, get them set, get them ready to do some things and come up to go upfield. This is fourth and uh, two now, big down. But one thing is first, first things first, they got to be able to make the first down. Fourth and two out of the timeout. Out of the shotgun. Sims with the pass, complete to Bradshaw, breaks a tackle, and takes it down to the 43-yard line for a first down, stopping the clock with 28 seconds to go. And once again, we remind you that the kicker will have a strong win on his back. As they restart the clock. And now a timeout taken by Blue Valley. As they're trying to get their personnel set, and Coach Rampey wants to talk to his defensive guys with 23 seconds to go in your state title game. <laughs> There's a lot of conversations going on right now between coordinators and, and coaches alike. You're, you're in a two-minute offense. There's no time for tomorrow. The game is lying right here. 23 seconds for a state title. You know, you're the Cougars. You want to get in field goal range because you feel like you have a kicker, has a strong leg. As you mentioned, Kevin can kick it over 40-some-odd yards. They did a big play from the defensive lineman. They got to give him this, get in the space, in the quarterback space, and you do that with pressure, kind of doing some line stunts to kind of rattle the guy up front. Coach Stim Stonebreaker, you see him right there, has done a good job. It may come down to, you know, your coach making the right decision, making the right call and the right play. There is Ryan Dolan getting loose on the sidelines. Coach says he can kick it from 50 and in. Right now it'd be a 59-yard field goal if they tried it. And first and 10, Sims on the roll. The pass is taken off the turf. They're saying a reception. No, they wave it off. The ball bounced to Dolan and one hopped in. And with 15 seconds still left on the clock, Ken Stonebreaker says the clock had a little runoff there. <laughs> I'm trying to say a little homer timer there. <laughs> he's yelling about should have more time is what he's saying. Second down and ten. Well, the reason the timer probably kept the clock going because they didn't signal if the ball was right. caught or not. Right. The official came in late with the incompletion call. Second down and ten. Put three seconds back on the clock. So they've got it up to 18 now. From the 43-yard line. Sims the pass complete. Woods trying to get out of bounds. And they're bringing down to the 41 and call their final timeout with 10 seconds to play in your 5A state title game. No more timeouts for Salina South. And right now it would be a 58-yard field goal if they tried it. With the win. With the win, they say that number three can kick from 50. Ryan Dolan's range is about 50 and in. He's long on the season, 44. And he's got a real force behind him. 
Well, this is two down territory anyway. You have no timeouts, 10 seconds to go. Try to get another play outside. If you're going to run anything, you'd probably like to run it to the short side of the field so the receiver can get it as much yardage as you can and get down and get it out of bounds. On the flip side, the Tigers has got to keep the guy in bounds and keep the clock rolling because there are no more timeouts by those Salina Cougars. New Valley has two timeouts left. None for Salina South. Down by a point. Ten seconds to go. They have the ball at the 40 and a half yard line. It's going to be third and a long seven. Five receivers deployed. Going deep, and the pass too long, incomplete with six seconds to go. And now it's fourth and seven. I think I heard Steve Rampy say they've got to go deep now. Right, they can, well, they have to because if they stay in bounds, well, there's one more play to go, six seconds. They have no timeout. It's fourth down, fourth and seven. If they're still on the sidelines. Well, this is a long field goal. 57 and 58 yard field goal. So they're going to have to go for the whole ball of wax here. Your state title game on the line, barring penalties. Fourth and seven. Sims. The pass is complete. Lax gets out of bounds with no time on the clock. Ball game over. Blue Valley wins it. Wow. Flax made the catch, dove to the sidelines, could not stop the clock in time. And it's a frustrating finish for Salinas South. State title number three for Steve Rampey and the Blue Valley Tigers. Kevin, this is a good football game. It came down to the last nitty gritty, last two minutes of the offense, last two minutes of the game. Tigers have been in this situation before, coming back from behind. Methodically worked the clock. Did a good job. Fun game. Well, since 1998, this team has struggled, but now they're back on the victory stand. State champions of 5A, the Blue Valley Tigers, back with more after this. The high school game of the week is brought to you by High V and their 20 Kansas City area employee-owned High V locations. Farmers Insurance and their Kansas City Metro agents and district managers. Remember, farmers get you back where you belong. KC Bobcat. In Blue Springs, Grandview, and Olathe. Cotman Transmission, home of the best free transmission evaluation in town. Athlete Technology, personalized replica football jerseys for area high schools. And by Overhead Door Company of Kansas City. The genuine, the original. Well, coming into this season since their 98 state title game, the Blue Valley Tigers had struggled. Just 12 and 24, their record. But today, they finished the season 12 and 1, and they're back on the top of the mountain. Champions of Class 5A for 2003. And it's time now for our play of the game, brought to you by your Kansas City Metro Farmers Insurance agents. Remember, farmers get you back where you belong in Michael Denning, Theotis with the big time play. Didn't score, but set up the winning score. And he and I told you at the beginning of the game that what a nice change up by number 22, Michael Denny. Gives them an added option. He has good feet, good vision on that particular run. Great run. They hit him on the 15-yard line. He drug the defender all the way to the two-yard line. As we send it down to Chad Harberts. Thank you, Kevin. I'm here with Steve Rampey, the victorious head coach of the Blue Valley Tigers. Talk about this second half comeback. What was the key? No quitting these kids at all. I mean, they just kept playing hard. You know, Salina uh, South obviously a great football team. They got up on us. It looked like we might be in trouble two scores down, and we just never quit. They just played hard. Our defense kept responding, playing hard the whole four quarters, and, and Michael Denny made a great play to get us down the end zone. How big of a lift was it for your squad to have Tyler Newton back on the sidelines for the second half? Well, it's just, you know, Tyler's close to all these guys. They've been, you know, they've been great friends for 12, 13 years, and, you know, it kind of took our breath away a little bit when he got hurt. You know, he got he broke his arm pretty good, so it kind of kind of set us back, and then, uh, you know, he was a motivational. Geno Waters, quarterback, 
Uh, he did the, he had the interception, the kicking game. Talk about his play today. You know what? He has not kicked an extra point this year in practice. He's never done it. He just told me when he went down, said, Coach, I can kick it. Give me a chance. And, you know, I don't ever doubt what he says he can do because he's a great athlete. Thanks, Steve. Congratulations Thanks, to State Championship number three. Absolutely. Steve Rampy, the Blue Valley Tigers, they win. Kevin. Congratulations to Blue Valley. And, boy, those guys, they just never lose their poise. They keep battling, and they're back at the top of 5A after some struggles the last few years. Yeah, and this was good for this football time team. I enjoy watching Coach uh, Rampy and his coaching staff, the way they methodically, they, they stayed with it. They lose Tyler Newton, as we mentioned at the beginning of the game. Chase Holton with some big runs, the big run by Mike Denning at the end. And really what it came down to was big plays and defense holding their own. Congratulations to the five state, uh, five, five day, uh, state champion. Our producer director Steve Kurtenbach for Theotis Brown, Chad Arberts, and our entire Metro Sports crew, Kevin White, saying so long from KU's Memorial Stadium in Lawrence and the 5A State Championship. Congratulations, Blue Valley Tigers, your 2003 5A State Champions.